Welcome to the Jewish Exponent Podcast. I am your host, Jared Safran. I'm here with Carter Walker of Vote Beat. Is that how you say it, Carter? Is it Vote Beat or Vote Beat PA? I think it's Vote Beat. Vote Beat. Uh, yeah, I'm the Pennsylvania reporter. Okay. Statewide issues, right? Yes. Voting and election uh, administration. Okay. And we're having Carter on today because he wrote a story back in the summer, I believe, it may have been July, about the Pennsylvania's effort to move the primary off of the first day of Passover, which had bipartisan support at that point. Uh, and obviously, since then, the effort has failed to move through the General Assembly. The uh, session days of December 11th, 12th, and 13th, widely believed to be the last chance to get something through, have now passed. And the PA primary is still set for the first day of Passover in April. Uh, but Carter, you're there in Harrisburg. You have the insider's perspective on this. You wrote a great story about it over the summer. I wanted to just have you on to talk about the why. Um, we wrote another story about this in November. And to me, it looked like the why was politicians being politicians, essentially, um, trying to uh, sneak their own priorities via the amendment process into this bill and then having the other side shoot it down and then both sides blaming each other for doing that, essentially. Uh, I have a few examples from my story. The House tried to add amendments for pre-canvassing and eliminating the date requirement for mail ballots. Um, the Senate at one point tried to add an amendment relating to voter ID. Uh, so is that what happened here or is there more to the story? Yeah, I think that's a good summary of it. I mean, the amendments really did tank the effort. Um, you know, like you said, there was wide bar bipartisan support for this. The governor was in support of it. Um, the Democrats, House Democrats wanted it. House Republicans didn't, but Senate Republicans did. So the two uh, controlling parties in each chamber wanted it. Uh, and, you know, in the summer, it seemed like a, a foregone conclusion, like, yeah, we're going to change the primary. We just we haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, but then when the time actually came in the fall, um, like you said, some amendments got tacked on to the Senate bill once it reached the House side. Uh, and those amendments made it unpalatable to Senate Republicans. And then there was a lot of back and forth, uh, stripping them out, sending new versions of the bill uh, back. Uh, but at that point, um, Senate Republicans were like, it's it's too late. We're going March 19th or nothing. And now it's too late to do March 19th. Yeah. Um, so you had this in your story over the summer. I put it in mine as well uh, in November. Rhode Island, Maryland, Delaware all moved their elections that were originally set for that date. PA is the only state that has a primary set for April 23rd. And there was a lot of bipartisan optimism over the summer. I used a bunch, I reused a bunch of quotes from my summer story in the November story. Uh, Jared Solomon, who represents the 202nd district in Northeast Philly and is Jewish, said, I'm cautiously optimistic. Ben Waxman, who represents the Center City District in the PA House, said, I would guess that it's something we'll address when we return in the fall. Um, Robin Schatz, the Director of Government Affairs for the Jewish Federation of Greater Philadelphia, said the will is there on both the Republican and Democratic side. Um, this did seem like a foregone conclusion. Is this a, a major failure that they weren't able to do this? I think, you know, uh, a lot of the Capitol reporters and I've discussed um, some of the difficulties that the legislature has faced in getting a number of things across the finish line uh, this year. And this has really been one of the prime examples I think that we discussed and I think it's worth noting, too, that those those three other states all have uh, trifecta government governments. So one party controls all three branches, which makes pushing uh, legislation and priorities through a lot easier. Um, Pennsylvania obviously has a famously divided government and that makes things difficult. But, you know, occasionally things do pop up where it seems like, OK, well, everybody's on the same page about this, so it should be able to get done. Um, but for whatever reason, uh, even though there was a lot of support, this couldn't get pushed through. Um, the, 
by the government has a big role to play in that. But I think the amendments, like you mentioned, uh, and the fact that they couldn't agree on a date, that, that re- that's what it really came down to, that they, mm-hmm. they just couldn't, they liked the idea in theory, but the specifics of it, they couldn't hammer out together. Was that why, so both sides claimed to have sent clean bills to each other, meaning that they were only going to change the date and not do anything else. Um, is that why the clean bills didn't pass? Was it because they couldn't agree on a date? Right, yeah. Well, the the Democrats version of their clean bill, um, and I hope you'll correct me if I'm wrong in any of this, but uh, it had the date sometime early in, in April. Uh, I want to say April 7th, maybe. Uh, it's slipping my mind now. Uh, but it was earlier than Passover, but it was later than the Republicans' desired date, which is March 19th. And they were pretty firm on that throughout the entire process. They never really budged uh, on that date, at least not that I saw. Um, you know, the Republicans were certainly concerned with uh, moving it off Passover. They were very clear on that. But they also wanted to uh, put Pennsylvania in a better position for nominating um, contests, you know, in relation to other states. Obviously, yeah. Republicans have a nominating uh, uh, a competitive race this year where Democrats don't really. So that was more of a concern for them. Right. Um, and, you know, so that's why I think in well, April. Compet- day was- competitive technically, but I suppose not really competitive. But yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's why <laughs> April wasn't really palatable for them because, you know, yeah. it's it doesn't move them up at all. Right. Um Democrats wanted to do that too, uh, give PA more power in the national competition. Jared Solomon uh, used that as a selling point when I talked to him over the summer. So that seemed to have bipartisan support as well. And I guess, so they couldn't agree on a date then. What, what was the reason specifically? Like they wanted different dates. Uh, they all wanted to avoid conflicts with religious holidays. Ramadan is also... Uh, I forget the exact dates of it, but it's uh, mid-March to mid-April because it's a month. And were they just, why didn't Democrats want March 19th? And why didn't Republicans want April 7th? You know, I'm not totally sure on exactly why they picked those. Specific, I mean, there there is a limited date range of dates that they could reasonably put it because of, um, yeah. there's, for, for campaigns, there's uh, timelines that they have to circulate petitions right. and get their documents filed. And there was a concern that if they moved it too early, that would run into Christmas and Hanukkah, and it would just be inconvenient to have people out knocking doors, getting signatures at that time. So March 19th, I think, was the earliest portion of that range uh, because it would just barely not conflict with that timeline, although they had to still move the timeline up uh, about two weeks. And then uh, the later date in April, which is the 16th, uh, I believe, um, Mm -hmm. that was, you know, the closest one to what it is originally, which they thought was, okay, that's as close as we can move it off this year. Because another big factor in this whole conversation was how counties felt about it and county election administrators. They were pretty clear from the get go. Well, I I don't want to say from the beginning. I don't think they necessarily had a problem with moving the primary um they're concerned with how late it got into the season for them mm-hmm. and uh house democrats they were factoring that into the date that they suggested they were saying okay yes let's move the primary but we still got to consider that election administrators need more of a runway so they were trying to push it to the latest date that they could get in april right, right. what kind of a role did the Jewish governor Josh Shapiro play in all of this. I think your story said that he wanted to move it, but he didn't really put himself out there on either of the bills and take a position and and try to lead. Uh, So what role did he play in all this? Yeah, he was clear um, that he he did think it should be moved. Um, I think a lot of this got kicked off when some Jewish groups had met with him back in uh, April. I'm sure you read that story in the Inquirer. Mm -hmm. And but yes, uh, I never got an answer and I never saw anything publicly about him advocating for one date or another, or one bill or another. I think 
he was taking a, a hands-off approach, like let the legislature decide what they want to send me. And as long as they move it, I'll sign it, I think was uh, more or less his approach. But yeah, I didn't see him throw his weight behind any particular date. Given the weight that he has in the Jewish community, did he fall short in a way here? Well, I think that's uh, would be for the community to answer, but I think yeah. uh, I think he his weight definitely would have made a difference. Uh, you know, if he chose to use it. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, so it's important to be clear here: this does not disenfranchise Pennsylvania or Jewish voters in Pennsylvania who are halakhically observant of Jewish law. They can still vote. Now they have to if they're not going to vote, if not going to break halakhic law and go to the polls that day, they have to vote by mail, correct? Correct, yeah, you can, uh, Pennsylvania has no excuse mail-in balloting, so you can go apply for uh, a mail ballot and uh, it'll get mailed to your house. You can, if you're in Philadelphia, you can drop it off at any number of drop boxes. Uh, or of course, I think under Pennsylvania's old mail ballot law, uh, absentee balloting, I think this uh, religious holiday do qualify for the absentee ballot if you don't want to use that, but it's essentially the same as the mail, uh, mail in ballot. So there still are options for, for folks to participate. Yeah. So pre 2020, this might've been tough, right? Yeah. Pre 2020, um, people obviously weren't as aware, I think, as they are now of the, of the other options to vote. I think people thought of voting PA as primarily an in-person thing, though the absentee option was there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, pre-2020, this definitely would have uh, been a bigger issue. And, and and maybe the, well, I wouldn't say maybe, I think uh, I, I did hear, you know, the mail-in balloting getting brought up in this conversation. That's probably why there wasn't as much of a, a concerted push, because they knew that mail-in balloting was still going to be there, was going to be an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't, again, it doesn't disenfranchise anybody. Some Jewish institutions that are polling places might have to drop out now and they'll have to find replacements. But other than that, it doesn't really present any logistical challenges. I don't think there are any halakhically observant Jewish candidates running who wouldn't be able to campaign on this day. I could be wrong about that, though. Maybe you know of some, but I don't think there are any, right? I don't know of any. And uh, I believe, um, I'm sure she will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, Commissioner Dealey from Philadelphia had said that, you know, they've been aware of this date, of course, for a, a long time, and they've worked with um, synagogues and other Jewish institutions that were going to be polling places to make sure that there were no conflicts. So I think they've already thought ahead on that front. Where do you think it might go from here? Do you think PA might try to move its primary up in the future because it would give the state more influence? I think people still want to do that. Yes. I mean, they've been trying to move the primary for years. There's been support for that. I mean, I think probably every state that's in our basket uh, that's not, you know, Iowa wants to be earlier in the calendar to have a say in their nominating uh, contests. And, you know, there were some people pushing this round to say, hey, let's just let's remove 2024 from the conversation and see if we could just pass a bill that goes into effect in 2028. That's what I think what the counties were in favor of. So they, they didn't have the time crunch. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe next time around, we'll see that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it'll just depend on if there's the political will there that time, uh, you know, ne next time there might not be this existential uh, reason, you know, the uh, Passover holiday that pushed people towards acting on this. Yeah. Uh, but so will the motivation be there is a question, but I think people still want to. It's just a matter of it, if it'll get done, because, again, we'll still probably have a divided legislature that makes those things difficult. Why wasn't this brought up? earlier you said there was a meeting between jewish groups and shapiro back in april i know uh legislators were talking about it over the summer for the upcoming fall session they knew it was coming why didn't they start talking about it earlier yeah that's a good question um you know i think the earliest bills i saw getting introduced on it that were referencing passover or at least co-sponsorship memos for bills were in january so you know some people were starting to get aware of it um I'm sure Governor Shapiro knew of it, given his faith. Uh, but getting anything done in Harrisburg during the spring and early summer is often really difficult because mm -hmm. all the oxygen in the room is sucked towards 
uh, getting a budget passed, which you probably know didn't even get finalized until just this week or last week. Yeah, uh, there were still some, some things that hadn't been finalized on the budget. So that, that usually takes up most of the oxygen in the room uh, yeah. and not a lot of other things get out at that moment. Was there ever talk of doing it even before this legislative session, like maybe in a previous one before Shapiro was elected? Not that I'm aware of, but uh, I've only been covering the legislature on these issues for about a year and a half now. Okay. Complicated environment you've walked into, right? With this divided General Assembly. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Carter Walker, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you.